Face protection in Airsoft Explained. Airsoft replicas cannot really hurt you as much because they don't have enough power to cause serious injuries, but they pack enough punch to damage your eyes and chip or break your teeth. In this video, we will take a look at the different types of face protection, which can save you a lot of pain and money. And also we will give you some tips to make wearing it more comfortable. Protecting your eyes with a pair of safety glasses is luckily a very common thing in Airsoft these days, and nearly everyone understands the importance of doing so. But what about the lower part of your face? We still see a lot of players running around without any form of protection whatsoever. Now think about this. In the US, the average price of a teeth implant is anywhere between 1500 and 6000 US dollars. Now that's a steep price to pay for not wearing a face mask. But as anyone who ever wore a face mask knows, these things can get pretty uncomfortable. What can you do about it? And what are some of the best practices we came across after more than a decade of playing airsoft? Let's dive right into it. The first and most common type of face protection is a standard mesh mask. These are manufactured by adding straps to a face-shaped metal mesh. Especially full mesh masks are bulky and not really tactical at all. On the other hand though, they offer great protection, are very affordable and proven to work well. You can get a mask for $15, which is why they are always recommended, especially for beginners. With a mesh mask, you can use all sorts of eye protection, be it glasses or goggles. You can also use these with helmets, but be aware, a combined setup with a helmet, goggles and mesh mask can get quite bulky, uncomfortable, and it will likely lead to fogging issues because all of this traps heat and moisture under your glass. Speaking about fogging, you should check out the Novridge Anti-Fog Unit, which can solve this once and for all. Another way to improve comfort is to connect the mesh mask directly to your helmet. It gets rid of the mask strap and makes the setup less flimsy. Another solution Chris found throughout the years is to cut the straps of the mesh mask itself and then zip tying to the goggles. This way you can only have one overhead strap making the whole solution more lightweight and convenient to use, but it requires a little bit of crafting at home. One advantage of running a mask is that you can find many different styles and designs. Some of them are cool, but some are, well, weird. Unless you want to look funny, we recommend avoiding these. The second most common type of face protection is a paintball mask. Given the popularity, you can find these in all price ranges, starting from cheap $40 versions and going all the way up to 200 or more for premium masks. As the name suggests, they were primarily used in paintball, but grew in favor within the airsoft community thanks to the high level of face and eye protection combined into one easy to carry package. However, they are not perfect. Compared to setups with a helmet, the back and top of your head are exposed. You could wear a cap to offer some protection from BBs, but it is not enough if you bump your head somewhere on the field. Also, given the closed form factor, cheaper masks tend to fog up, which ruins your game. That's why we would recommend going for a more premium one which is not good news for beginners on a budget. If you want to pick one of these up though, the dye masks are one of the best on the market and very good at handling the fogging issue as well. If you care about the military looks though, there are now very cool balaclava mesh masks getting increasingly popular. It combines the standard mesh mask, you know, with a standard balaclava. It's becoming more popular solution for people simply because it loses the annoying strap that is associated with mesh mask. And the thin fabric provides at least a little bit of protection on the rest of your face. However, because this solution is still fairly niche, getting one of these can be a bit more pricey, retailing around 30 to 80 bucks. Besides a bit higher price, this solution has another drawback. For example, it is pretty much fixed as you have little to no adjustment on the balaclava. This means that if it doesn't fit your face, you are left with a bobbly piece of a mesh that is not sitting with your mouth and nose well. The second most significant problem is the balaclava itself. It tends to trap heat and as as a result, fog up your glasses. On the other hand, these balaclavas just look tactical and don't break the immersion at all. Next up, an even less frequent form of a face protection, a face shield. You see, these are not really popular in airsoft, even though you can get some affordable 20 buck solutions on your airsoft helmet. Why? Well, there is multiple reasons to this. One of the most bothering is that the shield usually doesn't really cover your eyes and face from all sides, leaving room 
for getting hit at a weird angle. If you ask me, this is just not worth the risk and you should pair the shield with another set of safety glasses. But then there is this common fogging issue again. You have two layers trapping heat on your face, ruining your game. For these reasons, most people using a face shield do it mostly for the style. You can create some really unique looking loadout if you want to run a face shield. Just be aware of the potential issues. Now let's talk about my favorite, mouth guard. These are mostly seen in fighting sports like boxing or MMA. But this type of face, or rather teeth protection, is getting more and more popular with airsofters who don't really mind getting hit on the face but still fear about losing their teeth due to an unlucky shot. As I like to say, skin heals, but teeth they do not. The greatest thing about these is that they don't really limit you in any way. You can easily breathe, aim your rifle, they don't trap any heat leading to extensive fogging issue, and they are really cheap as well. Also, these are easily custom fitted with warm water, so they tend to be quite comfortable. The only problem, besides not really protecting your face, is that it is a little bit harder to talk, but still okay, I would say. Let me know down in the comments if you can easily understand what I'm saying and if this would bother you or not. At this point, let's talk about some common misconceptions about mouth guard. First things first, you only need one of these to cover your upper teeth, as the lower part is always covered by your lip, offering them some protection. Besides that, yes, these are safe to use for your teeth. I have been using them for years and I would probably never play without them again. It saved me already many times. But in all fairness, I would not recommend this mouth guard to a beginner simply because the lack of an actual face protection. Getting hit in the face means you will feel it and have marks all over it. This may especially be problematic in CQB fights where you get hit quite a lot throughout the day. Last but not least, there is one more solution I want to show you. The upcoming Nobridge face mask combines good protection with convenience. It looks like a regular mask attached to your goggles, but it has magnets, which allow you to quickly detach the mask and put it back on easily. No need to take off your whole head setup just to drink some water during a quick break while keeping your eyes protected. All right, these are the most common options. They offer different levels of protection and comfort, and it is up to you to choose what fits you the most. Just please make sure to use at least the mouth guard because over the years I've seen many players with broken teeth and guess what when they get it fixed they usually come back with a mask or mouth guard but that's a bit too late don't make the same mistake see you in the next one